Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will be looking at some of your advanced interview questions that you can expect as part of your Ansible. Now, whether you are looking to enhance your Ansible knowledge or you are attending interviews, these questions should really help you um, with the interview process. Uh, once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's dive into this. The first question that I have is, what are Ansible walls and how do you use them to manage your uh, sensitive data? Now, whenever we talk about your sensitive data, we can make use of your Ansible walls. Now, these Ansible walls will help us to encrypt and uh, securely store any of your sensitive data. Now, the sensitive data can be your password, it can be your API keys, it can be your SSH keys and any of your credentials. So if you want to uh, encrypt these uh, sensitive data, we can uh, make use of your Ansible walls for this. And then we can use these uh, uh, sensitive data in your Ansible playbooks and your Ansible uh, rules. Now uh, you can create your Ansible um, uh, encrypted vault file by making use of this command, which is an Ansible vault. So it provides you some uh, command. So this is the command that we generally use to uh, create or encrypt the uh, sensitive data and then we can start referencing them in the playbook by uh, making use of this hyphen hyphen ask hyphen vault hyphen uh, pass and we can also store the uh, uh, password in a file and then we can reference this, that file when we are calling our uh, uh, playbook. So whenever we talk about storing our sensitive data Ansible vaults is what we can use. The next question we have is how can you achieve idempotence in Ansible uh, playbooks? Now, idempotence basically ensures that uh, uh, we can run the playbook multiple times and every time it produces the same uh, result. So, unless it does not have any change, uh, if you are running the same look, uh, playbook again and again and again, it would produce the same result. So, this is where your idempotence uh, comes in. Now we can achieve the idempotence in your playbooks by making use of your idempotence uh, modules. So we have modules like your file, template and uh, service modules and this will ensure that the task executes only once and only when it is necessary and it does not have any unintended uh, side effect. So imagine we have a, a task which starts the Apache service. So every time I run the playbook, it will keep on starting the service again and again and again. Now that can be avoided by making use of your idea importance. So no matter how many times I run the playbook, it will essentially uh, give me the same uh, results. The next question we have is explain the concept of Ansible roles and their benefits in playbook organization. Now, whenever we talk about making your Ansible uh, playbooks reusable and uh, reducing the complexity of your playbooks, Ansible roles is what uh, uh, can be used. So these roles, these are simply your reusable uh, units of your uh, playbooks and it consists of your tasks, variables and your handlers in its own directory structure. So instead of uh, writing all of your variables, tasks and your handlers in one single file, uh, they will be divided in its own directory structure when we talk about your Ansible uh, roles. So roles mainly help us to organize and modularize our uh, playbooks and this makes it very easy to maintain the playbooks and share the playbooks with other users and also reuse these uh, uh, playbooks across multiple projects. So your Ansible roles they mainly promote the reusability of your code and also reduces the errors um, that uh, comes uh, when we are using one single playbook or you know we are not having reusability of your uh, code and this basically allows for better separation of your concerns. The next question we have is how do you handle error handling and error recovery in Ansible playbooks. Now Ansible supports your error handling and it provides several mechanisms that we can use for handling your errors and doing the recovery. So we have options such as your ignore errors, we have failed when and rescue blocks that we can use within the playbooks to handle our uh, errors. So we can use these features to handle these errors gracefully. We can also log error messages and also take appropriate actions based on the outcome of these uh, tasks. So let's say a certain task fails, you can take actions as well as to, do you wanna retry it or do you wanna capture those um, uh, error in a separate file, we can take actions as well. The next question we have is, explain how Ansible Tower enhances automation workflows compared to Ansible Core. So Ansible, 
we have two versions of it. You have the Ansible core, which is your CLI version, and then you have the web UI version, which is your Ansible uh, tower. So this Ansible tower, that is simply a web-based automation platform that we have. So we can use this in a, in a browser. And this helps us to centralize the management, um, uh, uh, monitoring, as well as control of your Ansible automation. So one, we get a centralized automation workflows. Everything will be available in one single place. And we can start managing and monitoring and as well as controlling the workflows that we are running on this Ansible tower. And in addition to that, it also offers various features. So we have your RBAC feature, which is your role-based access control. So we can uh, give access to other users and then we can also control the access for them. We can schedule your jobs. We can have a graphical inventory management as well as real-time analytics. And this makes it ideal for an enterprise scale automation environment so when you have large environments enterprise level automations that you want to do we can definitely leverage your um, ansible tower to do that work for us the next question we have is what are ansible collections and how do they differ from traditional ansible roles now ansible collections these are simply uh, some of your curated collections uh, of your Ansible content. So it has uh, collections like your roles, modules, plugins, and playbooks. And all these are distributed through the Ansible Galaxy and also private repository. So these are basically your uh, plugins or modules that are available that we can use to uh, uh, write your playbooks and write the automation uh, in your Ansible. So unlike your traditional roles, Collections allows for versioning, it allows for dependency management, also distribution of this reusable automation content across multiple projects. So whenever we talk about uh, making the uh, collections reusable, that is where we can have your Ansible Galaxy as well as your private repos where we can share these uh, collections with other users and we can also leverage them across multiple projects. The next question we have is how do you manage secrets and sensitive data in Ansible Tower workflows? Now Ansible Tower, this provides us with built-in support for managing your secrets as well as your sensitive data. And it has a feature known as a credential management feature that is available within the Ansible Tower. And we can use that to basically work with your uh, sensitive data. So your sensitive data can be your um, uh, credentials such as your SSH keys, uh, it could be your passwords, it could be your API tokens, and all of these can be so stored securely within the Ansible Towers credential vault. So this is same as your Ansible vault, but just that we get um, this feature in the Ansible Tower as well. And then we can start referencing them within the playbooks that we have written and also the job templates that we have written without exposing these credentials uh, in plain text. The next question we have is explain how you can implement multi environment uh, deployments using Ansible. Now we can implement multi environment uh, deployments in Ansible. For this, we can make use of your inventory files to define different environments. So essentially, we will be maintaining uh, a multiple inventory file. So, like for example, if it's a fraud environment, we'll have one inventory file. If it's a dev environment, we'll have one inventory file. So we will be uh, maintaining the inventory files for the different different uh, environments and also variables to uh, customize each of these um, uh, environments so we can customize the configuration settings for uh, each of these environments so ansible also gives us this dynamic inventory plugins and group variables and this allows for uh, dynamic and flexible environment uh, management so that's basically how we can implement your uh, multi-environment deployments by making use of your Ansible. The next question we have is what strategies do you use for testing Ansible playbooks and roles? So once you're done writing your Ansible playbooks and roles, we also have the option of testing these by making use of your uh, tools. So we have tools like Ansible Lint, Molecule and Test Infra that can be used to test our Ansible playbooks as well as your roles. Now Ansible Lint, it basically checks for any syntax errors and the best practices that we can follow. Uh, Molecule helps us to automate testing across different platforms like you know Docker or Odranth. And Test Infra helps us to perform integration testing by verifying expected system state changes. And that's how we can uh, basically test our Ansible playbooks and roles to make sure everything is working as uh, expected. 
The next question we have is how do you implement blue green deployments using Ansible? Now, uh, blue green deployments are basically having two identical uh, environments, like you know, let's say a prod and a UAT. So this is maintaining two identical environments. Uh, let's call it as your blue environment and your green environment. And then uh, we switch traffic between them by making use of your um, uh, load balancers and uh, DNS updates. So, you know, like let's say blue environment will be a prod and then the green environment would be, let's say, uh, prod one, for example. And then we basically essentially switch the traffic between this blue environment and uh, green um, environment. Now, Ansible playbooks can automate this uh, deployment process for us including the provisioning configuring and also updating the infrastructure components for both of these um, uh, environments so uh, like for example uh, uh, deploying the latest packages or updating the configuration files or updating the load balancer configurations all those things can be done by making use of your ansible uh, playbooks the next question we have is explain how you can integrate Ansible with version control systems such as Git. Now, whenever we talk about code, we'll definitely have your version control system. So Ansible can also be integrated with your version control systems, for example, uh, with your Git. Now, this helps in managing the playbooks, the roles and other automation content. So basically maintaining multiple versions that can be done by making use of your Git. So by storing our Ansible code in Git, Teams can collaborate, they can keep track of the changes and also maintain version history. And what this does is this will help us to ensure we have a consistent and reproducibility across multiple environments. That's where we can make use of your version control system. So mainly when you want to collaborate with other people, you want to keep a track of all the changes that is being done and maintain a version history, we can make use of your Ansible and Ansible uh, uh, can be integrated with your Git as well. The next question we have is how do you handle rolling updates and zero downtime deployments in Ansible? Now, rolling updates and zero downtime deployments can be achieved in Ansible. So there are multiple strategies that we can follow. So one of the strategy is to have a serial execution. So one after the other, then uh, health checks and also having your service monitoring. So we can make use of these strategies for uh, having your rolling updates and zero downtime deployments. Ansible playbooks can help us to automate the process of updating the infrastructure components one by one, maybe let's say updating your instances one by one and also ensuring that the services will remain available and also responsive throughout the deployment process. And that is how we can ensure uh, we do a rolling updates without any uh, downtime uh, when you're doing these deployments. The next question we have is what are Ansible Tower job templates and how do you use them to automate tasks? Now Ansible Tower job templates, these are simply your reusable configurations that are available for us, which we can use uh, in your Ansible playbooks or within your ad hoc commands when we are running them on the managed hosts. Okay, So these are simply your reusable configuration files that can be utilized. Now they allow us to define your playbooks, they allow us to define your inventory, credentials and other parameters that are needed to execute your tasks. Now what it does is it makes it easy for us to automate the routine operations and workflows in Ansible Towers web interface or through API calls. Okay, so any automations that you want to do, that all those things can be done by making use of these job templates which are available within your Ansible Tower. The next question we have is how do you implement infrastructure as code using Ansible? Now Ansible is mainly a configuration management tool but it can also be used to set up your infrastructure um, by making use of your code. So we can make use of your IAC uh, within your Ansible to define the infrastructure resources, the configuration as well as your dependencies and all of these will be defined within a YAML uh, uh, file. Okay, So the playbooks and the roles that we write, these are your YAML and uh, all these configurations can be defined within this YAML. So this Ansible's uh, declarative syntax will allow us to describe the desired state of the infrastructure components and this enables for automated provisioning, automated configuration and automated management of your IT resources.
So for example, I want to launch an EC2 instance or set up a VPC in AWS, I can make use of your Ansible playbooks for that. The next question we have is explain how you can orchestrate complex workflows and dependencies using Ansible Tower workflows. Now Ansible Tower provides us with uh, uh, something known as Ansible Tower workflows and this allows us to orchestrate complex automation workflows which has certain dependencies or conditional logic or manual approvals we can make use of your ansible tower workflows for that so these workflows they mainly help us to chain together multiple uh, job templates or running tasks in parallel or sequentially or waiting for inputs from the user or any external triggers before proceeding to the next step so this enables us to automate end-to-end -end processes and streamline your IT operations effectively. So that's where your Ansible Tower workflows can be used. So it's like in an end-to-end -end process that we can define and it can have multiple things like um, uh, running the jobs in parallel or waiting for approvals from the user or uh, having an external triggers, all those things can be done. So there you have it. That brings us to the end of our advanced uh, interview questions as part of your Ansible. I hope you found this uh, video valuable for your Ansible journey. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon for notifications. Let me know in the comments section what other topics you would like me to uh, cover. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.